with that last thought, I let sleep take over and drift off into a deep slumber, the events of the night still fresh in my mind. Tomorrow is a new day, and I feel ready to face it, thanks to the help and support of these incredible animatronics. Despite all the chaos and danger, we've come out on top, and I can't wait to see how our bond will grow even stronger in the days that lie ahead. As I wake up, I realize that it's 9 p.m., and my stomach is growling with hunger. I head to the kitchen and prepare myself a quick, simple dinner before getting ready for the upcoming night. Despite the events of the previous night, I feel a sense of determination and eagerness to face whatever lies ahead. These animatronics have brought out a side of me that I didn't realize I had, and I'm excited to see what the next night will bring. With a plate of food in hand, I sit down at the kitchen table and take a few bites, savoring the flavor and feeling the energy start to flow through me. My mind is focused on the upcoming night, and mentally I'm already preparing myself for the challenges and surprises that might come my way. After dinner, I head to my room and grab my body cam, handgun, tactical gloves, and military uniform. I take a few moments to go over the equipment, making sure everything is in good working condition, and that I have enough supplies for the night ahead. With a sense of focus and determination, I put on my gear, feeling the weight and familiar feel of the equipment on me. With my gear in place, I look at myself in the mirror and feel a sense of readiness. The uniform and equipment serve as a kind of armor, both literal and mental. I feel ready to face whatever dangers or challenges may come my way, knowing that I have the tools and training to handle them. With a final glance in the mirror, I head out the door, prepared for the next chapter in this strange journey. I head out of the house and towards my military jeep, parked in the driveway. As I approach, I unlock the car and slide into the driver's seat, feeling the familiar comfort of the vehicle's interior. I start the engine and drive to the pizzeria, knowing that the night is waiting for me. As I drive to the pizzeria, my mind begins to race. I can't help but think about the events of the previous night and wonder what the next one has in store. I grip the steering wheel tightly, feeling a mix of excitement and trepidation as the pizzeria comes into view. With a deep breath, I steel myself for what's to come and continue on to the pizzeria. As I pull up to the pizzeria parking lot, I take a moment to survey the area. The building stands in front of me, silent and seemingly peaceful in the night. Despite the quiet exterior, I know that danger and intrigue lie within and that I must be prepared to face them. With determination, I park my car and step out, ready to begin my watch over the pizzeria. As I enter the restaurant, I'm greeted by the familiar sight of the animatronics. They wave to me, their eyes lighting up with a sense of joy and happiness. Their warmth and friendship are a welcome sight in the otherwise eerie and quiet pizzeria. It's a reminder that despite their robot, their robotic nature, they have a heart and a desire to connect and protect. I smile and wave back to them, feeling a sense of camaraderie and understanding between us. Despite the danger that lies ahead, I feel a sense of warmth and comfort in their presence, and I know that together we can face whatever comes our way. I approach the animatronics and give each of them a small nod, silently expressing my appreciation and gratitude for their support and friendship. I walk with the animatronics, heading towards the office. As we walk, I can't help but notice the sense of purpose and loyalty in their eyes. They seem more determined than ever to protect the pizzeria and those inside, and their presence gives me a sense of courage and determination. I feel grateful to have such powerful friends at my side as we approach the office. As we reach the office, I step inside, the warm, familiar environment bringing a sense of familiarity and comfort. I approach the computer screen and monitor, preparing myself for whatever danger or surprises the night might bring. We all gather around the computer screen, watching the security cameras intently. The restaurant is quiet and still, but I can feel a sense of tension in the air. I watch the screens closely, looking for any signs of danger or movement. The animatronics stand nearby, their eyes also fixed on the cameras, ready to take action at a moment's notice. The night goes smoothly for three hours, with no signs of the vandals or any other disturbances. The animatronics and I continue to watch the cameras intently, our focus unwavering. Despite the peaceful nature of the night, I can't help but feel a sense of trepidation of what might happen. The calm of the night only serves to heighten the suspense and anticipation. As we sit in the office, waiting for something, anything, to happen. Suddenly, the animatronics shut down unexpectedly, their eyes going dark and their bodies going limp. 
I watch in shock and confusion as they fall silent, unsure of what's happening. I turn in my chair to look at them, seeing their lifeless forms slumped over. I approach them, touching their cold metal armor and shaking them, trying to understand what's happening. I rush back to the security cameras, my heart racing with worry and confusion. I scan the screens, trying to find any signs of break-in or activity that might explain what's happening to the animatronics. But the cameras show nothing. The pizzeria is just as still and quiet as ever, with no sign of anyone having broken in or done anything to deactivate the animatronics. I freeze as soon as I see it on security camera 6, a shadowy figure standing in the dining area, unmoving. It's too dark to make out any details, but the silhouette is unmistakably humanoid in shape. My heart races and my mind reels, trying to make sense of what I'm seeing. Who is this figure? Are they responsible for the animatronics deactivation? I feel a sense of fear and dread wash over me. I watch in horror as the shadowy figure looks directly at the security camera and smiles, their eyes and mouth glowing a bright, unnatural white. A shiver runs down my spine at the sight of this eerie, otherworldly visage. Who or what is this creature? And why does it seem to be interacting with me by looking at the camera? I feel a mixture of fear and confusion as I try to process what's happening. As the camera flickers, the shadowy figure suddenly vanishes as if it was never there. I stare bewildered and unsettled at the screen, trying to process what I just saw. My mind races, trying to understand the implications of this strange and unsettling encounter. Could this be an unknown threat? Or something more mysterious? As I try to make sense of it all, I'm left feeling more confused and concerned than ever. I quickly switch through the cameras, finding the figure in the parts and service room. It's rummaging through the mascot suits, and a particular one catches my eye. It seems to be a variant of Spring Bonnie from Fredbear's Family Diner. I feel a chill run down my spine as I realize that this mysterious figure is not only responsible for deactivating the animatronics, but also messing with a suit that has a dark history of its own. My breath catches in my throat as the shadowy figure stops and turns to look directly at the camera, its glowing eyes and sinister smile unnerving me on a primal level. It's as if it knows I'm watching and is taunting me with its presence. The sense of dread and fear that washes over me is unlike anything I've ever experienced before. I frantically scan through the cameras, trying to find any sign of the shadowy figure that was just in the parts and service room, but it's nowhere to be found. I feel a growing sense of dread and paranoia as I realize that this creature is not only capable of appearing seemingly out of nowhere, but also just as mysteriously disappearing without a trace. What is it? What does it want? Suddenly, something hits the back of my head with such force that I'm instantly knocked unconscious. Everything goes black, and I fall forward, slumping over the desk in the office, the room going silent as I fall into oblivion. Feeling groggy and disoriented, I gradually come to, finding myself in a mechanical chair. I'm bound to the chair by two mechanical armrest cuffs and a clamp over my chest. Confusion and panic begin to set in as I try to make sense of my surroundings and remember how I got here. I struggle against the restraints, thrashing about in the chair, trying to break free. As the panic sets in, my ears detect a strange, whirring noise that fills the air around me. The sound is unlike anything I've heard before, a terrifying mechanical hum that sends chills down my spine. My heart races, and I struggle harder against the restraints, the fear and helplessness I feel mounting with each passing second. As I glance up, my eyes meet the sight of a monstrous Freddy mask, the front half adorned with three savage saw blades. My heart leaps into my throat at the horrifying sight, the metallic grind of the blades sending waves of dread through me. The glowing red eyes only serve to amplify the unsettling presence of this nightmarish creation, filling me with an overwhelming sense of terror. Despite the overwhelming dread and fear, I'm unable to look away from the terrifying sight of the Freddy mask with its spinning saw blades. I feel powerless and trapped in the chair, my mind racing, trying to make sense of this twisted nightmare. As I struggle against the restraints, a voice echoes through the room, the sound sending a shiver down my spine, as I turn my gaze to the source of the voice, I see the shadowy figure step into view from the shadows. It moves with an uncanny grace, its glowing eyes and mouth fixed in a sinister smile. The figure is not human, it's something else, something other. I watch as the shadowy figure emerges from the shadows, his dark silhouette barely illuminated by the dim lights. The voice that echoes through the room belongs to none other than the figure I've been unable to shake the feeling of dread from. 
He approaches me slowly, his steps echoing through the eerie surroundings. His voice is a low, mocking chuckle that adds to the already tension-filled atmosphere. As the figure steps into the light, I get a better look at his attire. A purple police officer uniform, complete with a badge and hat. But what catches my eye the most is his skin. It has a sickly, purple hue that seems unnatural and unnerving. The sight of him, standing there with his twisted smile, only serves to heighten the sense of dread and unease that surrounds me. The realization hits me like a ton of bricks. This twisted monstrosity standing before me is none other than the infamous purple guy from Five Nights at Freddy's. I feel a mixture of shock and horror as I remember the dark history associated with this character. The deaths of five children at the hands of this madman while wearing a similar spring bonnie suit. The weight of this revelation only adds to the terror and despair I feel in this nightmarish situation. A chill runs down my spine as I recall the horrific details of the purple guy's crimes. After killing the five children, he would stuff their bodies inside the animatronics themselves. I recall how those incidents led to the rumors and urban legends surrounding the pizza restaurants and the terrifying animatronics. Now, face to face with this evil figure who has seemingly come to life, those memories take on a whole new level of terror. The horrifying laughter of Purple Guy echoes through the room, sending chills down my spine. I watch him leave, before my eyes are drawn to the Freddy mask, which begins to move towards me. The saw blades spin menacingly in the mask, each rotation bringing the mask closer and closer. As the Freddy mask advances, a sliver of hope shines through. I glance over at the cuff on the left armrest, my gaze fixed on the loose screw. Despite the fear and the overwhelming situation, my military training and instincts kick in, heightening my senses and focus. I realize that this could be my one chance at escape. I grit my teeth and focus all my attention on the screw. With deliberate and determined movements, I start to pull it out. The screw turns awkwardly, each rotation loosening it further from the cuff. I breathe deeply, trying to stay calm as the Freddy mask creeps ever closer, the saw blades spinning. The screw falls out, and the cuff comes loose, freeing my hand. I feel a surge of hope and elation, the adrenaline pumping through my veins. In a quick motion, I pull my hand out, feeling the cold air hit my skin. Despite my relief, I know that I'm still far from safe, but at least I have one less restraint to contend with. Panic and adrenaline surge through me as the Freddy mask approaches. I frantically feel around the chair for the button that would release the other cuff my fingers searching with desperate haste. Every second feels like an eternity as I struggle to find the mechanism, afraid that the mask will reach me before I make it out. My chest heaves with panicked breaths as I stand there, facing off against the menacing Freddy mask. The adrenaline pumping through me is palpable, heightening my senses and sharpening my focus. Though I'm no longer bound to the chair, I'm still trapped in this menacing chamber, surrounded by the twisted creations of this nightmarish being. My mind races, trying to think of a way to escape and end this horrifying ordeal. My eyes scan the room, searching for any means of escape or advantage. And then I spot it, my handgun on a shelf nearby. Relief washes over me as I quickly grab the weapon and prepare myself for whatever might come next. The parts and service room seems different, the layout slightly altered for some sinister reason. I stay vigilant, not knowing what surprises or dangers lie ahead. Armed with my pistol, I burst out of the parts and service room into the main dining area. The eerie silence surrounds me, the dim lights casting creepy shadows across the restaurant. I move with purpose, aware that this creature could appear at any moment, ready to confront or hide whichever serves my survival. I freeze as I see the purple guy messing with the spring bonnie suit. A mix of fear and hatred courses through me, knowing that this twisted being is responsible for the atrocities I've witnessed. But something seems off. The suit appears different. The animatronic eyes glowing red instead of the normal beady black. A mixture of confusion, curiosity, and dread overwhelms me as I watch this malevolent creature work on the suit. I freeze as I see the purple guy messing with the spring bonnie suit. A mix of fear and hatred courses through me, knowing that this twisted being is responsible for the atrocities I've witnessed. But something seems off. The suit appears different. The animatronic eyes glowing red instead of the normal beady black. A mixture of confusion, curiosity, and dread overwhelms me as I watch this malevolent creature work on the suit. Gathering my courage and taking aim with my pistol, I shout at the purple guy, ordering him to stop and raise his hands. My voice echoes though the empty dining area, a mix of authority and fear evident in my tone. 
My heart races as I watch him slowly turn to look at me, his twisted smile growing wider as his gaze meets mine. The chilling laughter of Purple Guy sends shivers down my spine. His sinister voice fills the room, each word dripping with menace and cruelty. It's a sickening sound, one that echoes the true depth of his twisted nature. Despite the weapon in my hand, I feel a sense of unease and dread in the presence of this evil incarnate. My pistol is trained on Purple Guy, the tension in the air thick enough to suffocate a man. I watch as he laughs and speaks in that eerie, sinister voice, his words making the already heavy atmosphere even more chill. His mannerisms and behavior are that of a madman, and I know that I'm dealing with a deranged, psychotic threat that can't be reasoned or negotiated with. My blood boiling with anger and disgust, I say something highly distasteful to Purple Guy, my voice dripping with revulsion. The words escape my lips like venom, a verbal attack against this vile being who has caused so much suffering and pain. I know that my insult likely won't faze him, given his twisted nature, but the satisfaction of voicing my contempt makes it worth it. The shift in his demeanor is immediate, and he stops what he's doing, his expression changing from jovial to furious. His once twisted smile turns into a snarl, and his eyes burn with rage. The atmosphere suddenly feels even more threatening, and I know that I've hit a nerve. My heart rate quickens as I see Purple Guy's angry reaction. I brace myself for a potential attack my mind racing through various scenarios. As much as I hope he won't respond with violence, I know better than to underestimate his unhinged nature. My heart sinks as I see Purple Guy angrily pull out a purple knife, his eyes ablaze with fury. His voice is cold and menacing as he speaks, a flurry of angry words and threats that fill the room like a dark cloud. I keep my weapon aimed at him, my finger on the trigger, ready to defend myself if he makes a move. My heart skips a beat as Purple Guy lunges at me but I manage to dodge the attack, adrenaline pumping through my veins. He misses me and slams into the wall, causing a loud crash that echoes through the restaurant. The impact shakes the room, but I don't waste a moment and take advantage of his momentary distraction, taking aim at him once again. My pistol fires a shot, and the bullet slams into Purple Guy's leg. He lets out a loud howl of pain and stumbles back against the wall, clutching his wound. I hold my ground my weapon still pointed in his direction, feeling a twinge of satisfaction in knowing that I've caused him pain. As Purple Guy stumbles back against the wall, clutching his wound, his voice fills the room with an eerie threat. You'll regret this, he spits out angrily, his words laced with menace and determination. The sheer malevolence in his tone sends another shiver down my spine, reinforcing the idea that this isn't just a mindless threat. Gathering my wits and my courage, I shout at Purple Guy, demanding answers about the deactivated animatronics. My voice echoes through the room, filled with anger and defiance. I watch as Purple Guy slowly composes himself, a twisted smile on his face as he begins to speak, his voice a sinister whisper as he revels in the horror of his actions. Ah, I did something very special, didn't I? Purple Guy chuckles, his voice dripping with a dark pleasure. I put them in a deep sleep, a twisted slumber from which they may never awaken. The twisted glee in his words sends a chill down my spine, the realization that these animatronics were just pawns in his sick game of terror. My anger surges as Purple Guy speaks, his twisted glee enraging me to my core. Without thinking, I slam my fist into his face, a primal act of defiance and rage against the evil that stands before me. As my knuckles connect with his skin, I feel a flash of satisfaction, but the darkness in his eyes only seems to grow in response. My face contorted with anger and disgust, I point my weapon at Purple Guy, the barrel mere inches from his head. My voice is stern and fierce as I declare, you will burn in the fiery pits of hell for what you've done. The threat hangs heavy in the air. My determination to eliminate this menace clear and unwavering. Turning, I see the metal hook of Foxy the Pirate Fox resting on my shoulder. My heart skips a beat as my focus shifts, my gaze meeting the smiling face of Foxy as he looks at me. My mind struggles to process this unexpected twist in the situation. As if in a dream, I watch Bonnie, Chica, and Golden Freddy appear, their once lifeless forms now infused with life and warmth. Their happy expressions are a stark contrast to the cold, twisted visage of Purple Guy, and the sight fills me with surprise and awe. I can hardly believe what I'm seeing, wondering how these animatronics could have been reactivated. Foxy's voice, filled with a new strength and determination, breaks through my swirling thoughts. He calmly me to down, to let him and the other animatronics handle Purple Guy. My eyes meet his, and I can see a flicker of recognition and trust in his metallic gaze, something I hadn't noticed before. 
I nod slowly, lowering my pistol as I let the animatronics take charge. I watch in disbelief and grim satisfaction as Freddy Bonnie Chica and Golden Freddy take turns beating the living crap out of Purple Guy. Their blows land heavily, each movement fueled by a pent-up rage and a desire for justice. It's a strange but satisfying sight, seeing these animatronics, once mere machines of terror, become instruments of vengeance against the one responsible for their suffering. As the beating subsides, Foxy steps forward, grabbing Purple Guy's shirt with his metal hook. With a swift heave, he lifts him up and turns to face me. It almost seems like he's offering Purple Guy up like a sacrificial lamb, waiting for my command. I can see the anger and determination in Foxy's eyes, a stark contrast from the usually joyful animatronic I'm used to. Want the honors? Foxy says calmly, offering me the chance to end this nightmare once and for all. My heart races as his words hang in the air, the weight of the decision resting heavily upon me. I take a deep breath, looking at Purple Guy's battered and bruised form, the once menacing villain now reduced to a cowering mess. Purple Guy squirmed and struggling, his fear evident in his frantic movements. I watch as Foxy keeps him firmly in place, preventing his escape. The silence in the room is deafening as I stand there, contemplating the fate of this evil being. My voice is filled with righteous anger as I point the weapon at Purple Guy's head. Burn and suffer in hell where you belong, I shout before pulling the trigger, unleashing a shot that puts an end to his evil reign. Silence fills the room as Purple Guy's lifeless body falls to the floor with a thud. I stand there. My chest heaving as adrenaline pumps through my veins, the events of the past hours seeming like a surreal nightmare. The animatronics stand behind me, their forms looming large, waiting patiently for my next move. The sound of applause suddenly fills the room as the animatronics break the heavy silence, their metallic hands slamming together in recognition of my actions. Their joyful and energetic applause fills the air, a stark contrast to the dark and menacing atmosphere that had consumed the room just moments before. I join the animatronics in the task of disposing of Purple Guy's lifeless body. We haul it outside, where we build a makeshift pyre, the flames dancing in the night like vengeful specters. As the fire roars, purging Purple Guy's evil from the world, I feel a sense of closure and justice, the weight of the ordeal finally beginning to lift. The fire crackles and roars as Purple Guy's body is consumed by the flames. The animatronics stand nearby, watching in silent solemnity as the fire consumes the remnants of the evil that had plagued this cursed place. It's a surreal and somber sight, the fire illuminating the night and casting eerie shadows against the dark sky. As the fire dies down, we watch as Purple Guy's body turns into ash, reduced to nothing but charred remnants of a sinister legacy. The fire is extinguished, leaving only the smoldering debris as testimony to the horrors that had taken place. The air is heavy with the sense of smoke and burning, a pungent reminder of the ordeal we've just survived. We head back inside the pizzeria, the animatronics following me with a newfound sense of trust and obedience. I lead them towards the other part of the parts and service room, the atmosphere quiet but charged with anticipation. As we step into the parts and service room, I show the animatronics the chair with Freddy's mask, the blades gleaming sinisterly in the dim light. The sight of the twisted contraption sends a shiver down my spine, a reminder of the horrors I had endured. The animatronic's eyes widened in shock as they take in the sight of the lethal device, the gravity of it all sinking in. The atmosphere grows tense as the animatronics gaze upon the deadly chair, their usually joyful expressions clouded with horror and disbelief. The realization that this restaurant, their home, harbored such a cruel and deadly contraption comes as a shock to them. They look at each other the weight of the truth settling upon them. As Freddy's eyes fall upon the Freddy mask, its blades glinting menacingly under the low light, a mixture of disbelief and terror washes over him. His body stiffens, his jaw dropping slightly, as he stands paralyzed by the sight. The idea that someone had twisted and corrupted his own image for such wicked purposes hits him hard, leaving him speechless and shaken. Freddy's rage boils over as he gazes at the distorted mask, a twisted mockery of his own likeness. In a burst of anger, he clenches his metallic fist and delivers a powerful punch to the mask, smashing it into two jagged pieces. The impact echoes through the room, the sound of shattering metal resounding through the silence. Taking a deep breath, I look at the chair, its wicked purpose weighing heavily on my mind. Turning to the animatronics, I ask for their assistance in dismantling it. Their eyes meet mine, the lingering shock and horror replaced by a newfound determination to put an end to this twisted chapter in their lives. 
Foxy steps forward, his hook twitching with eagerness. With Foxy leading the way, the animatronics join me in the task of taking apart the chair. Each of them contributes their strength and dexterity, working together in perfect synchronization. They tear at the chair's frame, dismantling it piece by piece, the metal groaning and twisting under their combined power. The atmosphere is charged with purpose as we work on the chair. Each part we remove a step closer to destroying this source of terror. The animatronics throw their full force into the deconstruction, their movements filled with a fierce determination to end this nightmare. The chair slowly loses its twisted form, reduced to a pile of scattered useless metal. Together, we manage to completely dismantle the fearsome chair, its sinister form reduced to a pile of scattered metal parts. The air feels lighter, the oppressive weight of the device lifted from our shoulders. The animatronics stand back, their eyes fixed on the pile of metal, a sense of relief and closure washing over them. As we stand in the aftermath of our collective effort, the pile of metal parts lying silently in the shadows, a sense of calm washes over me. The animatronics look at each other, their expressions a mix of weariness and satisfaction. The ordeal is over, the horrors of the past hours fading into memory. With a last, satisfying toss, we discard the remnants of the chair into a nearby salvage bin. There's a sense of finality in the action, the twisted contraption's purpose fulfilled and its remnants now doomed to rot in obscurity. The air is heavy with a mixture of exhaustion and relief. Emerging from the parts service room, we make our way back to the dining area, the familiar sights of the restaurant visible under the dim light. I glance at the clock on the wall, the faint ticking echoing through the room as the hands move to 6 a.m. The day has come to an end, the nightmarish events of the night finally over. As the clock strikes 6 a.m., a sense of relief washes over me. The long, harrowing night has come to an end, the day breaking to reveal a world untouched by the horrors I've witnessed. The animatronics stand beside me, their forms illuminated by the first hints of sunlight streaming through the windows, their metal bodies slowly returning to their normal passive modes. As the sun rises, bathing the room in a warm golden light, the animatronics turn and walk back to their places on stage. They exchange one final glance with me, a look of respect and gratitude in their eyes. With a gentle wave of their metal claws, they deactivate, returning to their passive modes, their spirits seemingly at peace for now. Before leaving the restaurant, curiosity gnaws at me. Armed with my flashlight, I decide to take a peek inside the animatronics, checking for any signs of tampering or evidence of Purple Guy's sinister work. I gently open up their chests, feeling a sense of unease and anticipation as my flashlight illuminates their inner workings. I exhale a sigh of relief as I find nothing sinister within any of the animatronics. The knowledge of their programming brings a sense of understanding to their behavior, their sentience and programming likely playing a part in their helpful and friendly demeanor during the night shifts. Armed with this newfound insight, I take a moment to gather my thoughts. With a final glance at the animatronic restaurant, now basked in the glow of morning light, I stride towards my military jeep. The keys jangle in my hand, the familiar sound a reminder of a world outside this twisted realm. With the horrors of the night behind me, I slide into the driver's seat and start the engine, the jeep coming to life with a low rumble. The engine purrs into life, the sound bringing a sense of familiarity and comfort. I take one last look back at the restaurant, the memories of the night already beginning to fade as daylight washes over it. The jeep responds with a responsive lurch as I pull away, the wheels kicking up gravel in a shower of grit and stone. As the restaurant grows smaller in the distance, I am filled with a newfound appreciation for the world outside this cursed establishment. The journey home is quiet and uneventful, the early morning light painting the city in a soft golden glow. I arrive at my home, the familiars of my house grounding me after the night's ordeal. As I pull into the driveway and cut the engine, a sense of peace washes over me, the safety of my own surroundings providing a stark contrast to the horrors I had just endured. As I step out of the Jeep, the air is cool and crisp, a gentle breeze carrying the scent of my neighborhood. The sight of my house brings a sense of stability and normality, a reminder of the world outside this twisted world of animatronics and nightmares. I take a deep breath the horrors of the night slowly fading into the recesses of my memory and make my way towards my front door. As I step inside my house, the comfort of familiar surroundings envelopes me. The silence is broken only by the gentle ticking of a mantle clock, the scent of home filling my nostrils and calming my nerves. 
I glance at the clock, the hands reading 7 a.m., and realize how far I've come since this nightmare began. The phone's shrill ring breaks the tranquility of the room, jolting me out of my thoughts. I walk over to the phone stand and pick up the receiver, my heart rate accelerating slightly as I wonder who could be calling at this hour. As the call connects and an all-too-familiar voice comes crackling over the line, a cold chill runs down my spine. There's a twisted, taunting edge to William Afton's voice. A sadistic pleasure in breaking the peaceful silence of my home. Afton's voice on the line is smug and self-assured, his words sending a chill down my spine. He clearly has a twisted understanding of what had unfolded the previous night, his knowledge of the horror I'd faced giving him a sense of power over me. I grip the receiver more tightly, my knuckles turning white as I wait for him to continue. The tone of his voice shifts suddenly, now filled with happiness and pride. His words come out in a burst of excitement, the sinister undercurrent of his personality only barely suppressed. He thanks me, almost graciously, for some unexplained reason. I stand there, stunned and horrified, as his words wash over me, the realization of what he's truly thankful for sinking in. William Afton's gleeful tone gives away the sinister nature of his question. He wants to know if I was the one who took out Purple Guy. The question catches me off guard, a jolt of surprise sending a shiver down my spine. I stand there, frozen and unsure of how to respond, my mind racing with the implications of what he's asking. The realization hits me like a ton of bricks as Afton's words sink in. He's been fighting Purple Guy too, trying to protect the kids from the Twisted Puppet Master. But the true evil was always Purple Guy, the one who kept coming back. It's a revelation that changes everything. My perception of the situation shifted and twisted by this newfound knowledge. I stand there, speechless, as the implications of Afton's words wash over me. As the weight of everything sinks in, William's next words send a ripple of relief and surprise through me. He offers me my paycheck early with a hefty bonus for my services, a token gesture that feels almost surreal after the horrors of the previous night. I stand there, the phone receiver clutched in my hand, unable to believe what I'm hearing. As the phone call comes to an end, William's parting words send a jolt of surprise and a small flicker of triumph through me. A promotion and a transfer to the night shift at the new Mega Pizzaplex, an honor that few are privy to. As I hang up the phone, I can't help but feel a sense of fulfillment. The horrors of the previous night somehow overshadowed by this unexpected twist of fate. With my nerves settled and my thoughts clear, I head into the kitchen and grab another slice of the health pizza, the savory flavors bringing a smile to my face. After eating, I head into the bathroom and start the shower, the warm water washing away the grime and stress of the previous night. As I step under the spray, the horrors begin to fade, the hot water cleansing my body and mind. The warm water courses down my back, the heat soaking into my tense muscles and washing away the tension. My mind drifts, the memories of the night replaying in fragments, flickering like scenes from a dream. The fear and exhaustion are still there, but they are softened, the passing of time blurring the edges, leaving only scattered impressions. As the steam envelops the room, I step out of the shower and dry off, the scent of soap lingering on my skin. I walk back into the bedroom and pull on a pair of comfortable pants and an old shirt, the fabric soft and welcoming against my skin. I crawl under the covers, the sheets cool against my body, and switch off the light, the room enveloped in a soothing darkness. The moment my head hits the pillow, exhaustion descends upon me, enveloping me in a warm, heavy embrace. My eyes close, my body sinking into the mattress, and I am carried away into a deep, dreamless sleep. The horrors of the night are forgotten as I rest, my mind blissfully vacant as I seek respite from the harrowing events that unfolded. As I drift off, the memories of the previous night still linger in my mind, their weight lightened as I think of William's gratitude and praise. I can feel a sense of relief and satisfaction settling over me, the knowledge that Purple Guy is gone for good offering a small measure of peace. With thoughts of the promotion and the Mega Pizzaplex in my head, I sink deeper into the realms of sleep, my dreams filled with visions of a better future.